Grace, peace, and mercy to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I, uh, well, the focus today a bit on, on uh, confession and repentance. I'll make a little confession right from the start. Um, I don't like to go to the doctor. And I don't imagine any of you like to go to the doctor. Um, I will avoid at all costs going to the doctor. Um, thinking about that a little bit, even this morning, Penny's a little sick, Grace is a little sick. Um, they probably need to go to the doctor. Um, uh, but you're probably not a whole lot unlike me. We don't like to go to the doctor. I say like because, well, because we're sick. And if we're sick, we don't want to go anywhere, right? We don't want to do anything. We don't want to hear anybody. Um, or we're in pain. And in pain, sometimes we just kind of cocoon up and want to be left alone. Um, or maybe we're in need of uh, some treatment or surgery of some kind. And again, um, many of us will avoid going to the doctor. There's, you know, there's reasons behind it, but I think the bottom line, if you would agree with me, is, um, is that we're probably afraid, right? Afraid of, of what they might say or what they might have to do or, or um, afraid of what medicine we might have to take or surgery that we might have to endure, um, and so because we're afraid, we just rather, okay, I'll wait it out and we'll, we'll not hear it. Um, and of course, the prescriptions that are often given, um, well, are ones that we need to receive. We need to hear it. Because that's, that's really the bottom line. Even though we're reluctant, we don't want to, we don't like to, it's something that's really good for us and healthy for us. Because if we're sick, we need to have uh, medicine prescribed. Or if we're in pain, we need to find out what that pain is so that it can be corrected or healed or helped. Or if we're in need of a surgery, then, then of course we need to hear that. We need to know and even undergo that healing process to take place. But we will resist it at all costs. Uh, now... This, well, this is just a, a simple concept, but it's one that I want you to maybe apply to our lives today. Um, because I don't, I don't want you to resist coming to worship over the next month, but um, we are going through the Gospel of Luke. And maybe you're aware of this, maybe not. And, and of course, the Word of God is the Word of God, right? God inspires His whole Word. And, uh, and yet he uses different people and has used different people to proclaim his word. And, and in the Gospel of Luke, he uses a doctor. Right? Luke was a, a doctor, a physician. He cared for people. And, and so the Gospel of Luke is unique. And it's wonderfully unique. Because it's written in a very orderly fashion. It's, it's written and presented to us in a way that, that all the facts are there. But, but I would say that today we specifically see a portion of Luke that, that is written uh, like the physician he is. He points out the diagnosis, so to speak. He points out the problem. And, and he, he, he gives even different facets of the problem of sin. And then he gives a very specific prescription for what the people of God should do. We're going to actually, over the next several weeks, be taking a look at the Gospel of Luke and and each week, I hope we can come back with, end with, um, some sort of prescription, we'll call it, uh, that would be applied to your life. Because here's, here's the problem that we have. Um, the problem that we have, I hear about it every year, I speak it most every year, um, I hear it from many of you, and it's, it's kind of the problem that we have at the Advent season, uh, similar to what uh, Jane even shared with the kids. Uh, we say, this year's going to be different. Uh, this year, I'm not going to be too busy. I want to focus on Jesus. Uh, this year, I'm not going to uh, spend too much money. I'm going to focus on Jesus. This year, I'm not going to enter into all this family drama. Instead, I'm going to focus on Jesus. We say this year is going to be different. We're going to, without distraction, focus in and prepare our hearts for the birth of Jesus Christ, even for the fact that he's coming again. But we tend to get distracted every time. And I don't just say this, but I hear it from you too. I, I think we would often say, well, there it happened again. It's January 1st. Um, where did the season go? Uh, where was my attention? Uh, so, so, so during this season of Advent, I want to say, okay, let's, let's visit the doctor, Dr. Luke, uh, uh, during our Sundays anyway, and let's see what practical prescriptions we can have to focus. Uh, here's our first one. 
Um, first one is uh, from Luke chapter 21. Um, we're actually going to more towards the end of Luke. You'll understand why when we read this passage. And, and I'd like for you to follow along. So if you can, um, you know, get your phone out, if your Bible is on your phone, um, or uh, the Bible in the pew, or if you brought your Bible today, uh, Luke 21. And, and there's a couple reasons why I want you to open it up and follow along. Uh, first reason is, this is a complex reading. It's just hard. Um, it, it's kind of confusing. And, and, and not so much confusing as it is just simply complex. It's detailed. And um, obviously, Luke writes a very orderly account of the whole story, the whole history of Jesus. Uh, but in chapter 21, he's, he's really going to get the heart of some really serious issues. And so it's just plain complex and, and a little bit challenging. So uh, Luke chapter 21, we'll start at verse 25. And I just want to, uh, I'm going to just take a pieces of it. And we'll spend a little time to try to summarize each, each important topic. So follow along if you would. Verse, uh, verse 25. Uh, and thank you for putting it up here, too. Uh, and there will be strange signs in the sun, moon, and stars. And here on the earth, the nations will be in turmoil, perplexed by the roaring seas and strange tides. People will be terrified at what they see coming upon the earth, for the powers in heaven will be shaken. He's saying sin's really prevalent in the world. Right? If we're going to summarize as we go along, sin is evident. All you got to do is look around the world. There's going to be like earthquakes and snowstorms and, and all kinds of stuff that reveals that the earth is affected by sin. Uh, we continue on, verse 27. All right, then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud with power and great glory. So when all these things begin to happen, stand and look up, for your salvation is near. Well, we know, Jane even shared with the kids, he's come and he's going to come again. That's pretty simple. Um, we see that in the text. And there's also this, this image, this picture where he says, uh, the Greek actually says it like this, straighten up and raise your head. It's almost this image of, uh, you know, when your kids were young or maybe they still are and they're in trouble and you say, uh, come here. And they're reluctant. They don't want to come, you know. It's like we don't want to go to the doctor. They don't want to come to you. And you're like, come, come here, right? Stand up. Get up, quit throwing yourself on the floor, come right here and look at me. That's kind of the text, right? Straighten up, raise your head, here, here's what's happening, right? Here's what's happening in the world around us. Uh, let, let's read on. Verse 29, uh, then he gave them this illustration. Notice the fig tree and any other tree. When the leaves come out, you know, without being told that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will, heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. Now, first of all, one that jumps out at me, and don't be distracted by it, this, this idea that this generation will not pass uh, away from the scene until all these things have taken place. That's confusing. Um, and you look at different commentaries and they say different things about the destruction of Jerusalem or, or the temple or, or whatever the case might be. One, one commentary um, that, that I kind of, it appeals to me because it's, it's similar to the previous context we just read. The commentary says, part of what he's saying here is that this generation of sinful unbelievers will not disappear. Just like you're going to have sin, the sinful world will continue to exist until he comes again. Sinful and unbelieving people will continue, right? You're still going to be surrounded. I'm still going to be surrounded. We're still going to be surrounded, not only by a sin-filled world, but this generation of sinful people will also endure till the end, right? Everybody's not going to get great, perfect. I like that part because it sticks with the context of what we're talking about, right? All of these things taking place, sin in the world, sin among people, Everything's going to disappear. The world will disappear. All are going to disappear. But my word will stand forever. Here comes the prescription. Here comes what he's saying. Now, there's a couple imperative words in here. And so almost think of it like this is that uh, he's given us the context. He's given us the diagnosis. And if we're playing on this whole theme of, of Dr. Luke, then here's where he's saying, 
this is what you must do. All right, this is where he's getting out his pad and saying, okay, this is the surgery you need. This is the medicine you take. This is what must happen. And, and listen for the imperative words. There's a couple of them here. Um, first one's this, watch out. Right, you see that in verse 34. Watch out, don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing, kind of going about looking for trouble, um, partying, drinking, and drunkenness, and by the worries of this life. Don't let that day catch you unaware. So watch out. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted by, you know, partying, drinking, getting drunk, whatever it is. But also he includes this one, the big one, right? Don't be distracted by the worries of the world. Don't get drawn in and pulled away and distracted by all the stuff that you have to endure in this sin-filled world. Watch out. Watch out because there's all kinds of distractions that are going to be present for you. Next one, next part, right? Part two, um, keep alert. Keep alert at all times and pray. I, I, I do like uh, the, well, it says, and pray uh, that you might be strong enough. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come to that, but the keep alert at all times and pray. Uh, in the Greek language, uh, there's a little bit of a different kind of feel for it where it says, uh, uh, be aware in every season instead of at all times. It simply says, literally says, be aware in every season. And I like that because it reminds me that, that whether you're young or a little older or whether you're a student um, or working or whether you're married or single, there are different seasons in our lives. And he's saying here, be aware in all of them. So don't be the older person looking going, boy, they need to be aware. Those young people, they're enduring all kinds. No, no. Right? He's saying you need to be aware too in every season. Or, or a young person looking at the older folks. Oh, boy, they need to be more aware. They need to see what God is doing or, or what God's not doing. Right? That, that instead, he's saying in every season, be aware. Be aware of what's happening in your life. And pray. And then finally, the last one. Uh, and here's, here's another. The imperative word is stand. This is the last verse that we're looking at. Um, pray that you might be strong enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. Now, just, just to kind of summarize those three. Um, first one's this. We say, watch out, don't be distracted. And, and we know the distractions that come, the worries of this world, party and carouse and other words that he would use. So watch out, watch out, don't be distracted by what you're doing. Now, be alert in every season. Pay attention and pray. Right? So be alert of what's going on in your life. Be aware of every season. Be alert about it and pray. Come to me about it. And then the final one is the easy one, but also the kind of terrifying one. Stand. Stand in the presence of the Son of Man. Now, again, not to play too much on this theme, but, but here's the prescription that's laid out before us. And it's kind of complex. Right? It's one that maybe we'd have to take a note of. Um, it's one, how does this actually practically work out? And, and so what I, I just want to give you a couple of very simple, brief, basic illustrations of how that prescription, I believe, is lived out today, for you today, right? Uh, today, you came into worship, and uh, Chris stood up here, right, like this, and, and he kind of, in these words, beginning of the text, uh, and he didn't use these words exactly, but he could have, he said, uh, uh, straighten up and raise your heads. He said, stand up. And, and, and his point was uh, not to be critical of you, but it was like, okay, we're going to the doctor together. We're going to go and hear what God's word has to say, according to Luke. So he says, straighten up, lift your heads, and here's what we got to say. And he said, not these words, but, but he, he illustrated it for us, watch out. Because there's all kinds of distractions that are in this world around us, this sin-filled world around us. Watch out for them, because they're distracting you too. And, and then he invited us to be alert, be alert about the things that are happening in our own lives so that we would actually confess our sins to him. We were alert about the things that were failing and wrong and difficult and, and tragic in us. That's why we confessed our sins to God. And then we prayed. We prayed a prayer of confession. And, and then Chris didn't say, you know, straighten up and, and lift your head. He ended with the ending of this text. 
in many ways, he, he said, stand up. He said, you will stand in the presence of the Son of Man, but now forgiven because of Jesus. By God's grace, through faith in Jesus Christ, you stand, not as a sinner, but you stand forgiven. Forgiven in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That, that's what he said to us. He, he invited us to actually live out this prescription in our worship today. It's going to happen again in just a little bit, right? Molly's going to come up um, with her parents and sponsors and grandparents, and, and she's going to come to the waters of baptism. And in every real way, her parents are inviting her. She can't stand yet. But inviting her to uh, straighten up and raise her head, and God's going to do something pretty special. We're going to stand up. We're going to raise our heads. We're going to speak the creed together. We're going to confess the faith that this child is being baptized in. And when we confess the faith that she's baptized in, we, we go through the words of the creed. But even before that, we say, do we turn from and repent of these temptations? Are we saying, watch out, be alert? And then we pray and trust her to Jesus Christ. And again, she can't stand yet, but she will walk away, be carried away, standing before God in a whole different way today, right? She stands before God as one who is washed clean through the waters of baptism, one who is joined to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that she would stand before the Son of Man, not only on the last day, but today, different, changed. See, the same thing's going to happen. You're going to come up here, we're going to gather around the altar. Uh, some are going to come and be reminded of their baptism, Right, reminded that they stand before the Son of Man baptized as a child of God. Others of us will stand and we'll, we'll hold out our hands. Well, we come with this process. We straighten up, we look, lift our heads, we come and we say, be alert, uh, warning, be on guard. We know the sins that we've committed. We know that we need a Savior to die for us. And, and, and we know that he's shed his shed his blood, he's given his life, and now we receive him. And as we receive him, we hear these words at the very end. We say, essentially, stand up. You're forgiven of all your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That these gifts of his body and blood would strengthen you. And you'll walk away in a different standing. A different standing before God. Reminded that you are forgiven. As a repentant sinner, being, being forced to look at these difficult difficult words, be forced to look at your sin, you stand different before God, forgiven. Now, don't miss this. We don't just do this once a week, right? You, you don't just take this prescription once a week. Uh, you don't just take this prescription a couple times a month, right? This, this is uh, prescribed by God for us every single day, all day. We stand together with our spouses, we stand with our children. We stand with our parents, uh, with our neighbor, with our friend. And, and we hear the word of God, straighten up, lift your head. Here's the news. Right? Watch out. That's what we tell each other. Right? Watch out. Don't let your hearts be dulled. Don't get distracted by drunkenness or worries of life. Don't be distracted. We say stay alert in every season because sin's going to come. It's affected the whole world. It's affected us. We pray seeking God's forgiveness and then we say to our spouse or we say to our child or we hear from our child or we say to our parent or they say to us or we speak to our neighbor or our neighbor speaks to us and, and we remind one another that we stand differently. Because of our faith in Jesus Christ, he's died for us and we stand forgiven and righteous and holy. That's your prescription. Now we got to take it. Because over the next couple of months, man, there's all kinds of distractions, all kinds of difficulties, uh, all kinds of sin that we see in the world around us. Uh, but what God invites us to do, not just once a week, not just a couple times a month, but God invites us to live a life where we're living out the same, the same process. It's essentially repentance. It's also absolution, forgiveness. You stand forgiven and righteous and holy in the sight of the Son of Man. Amen.
we uh, continue our worship this morning with, uh, with a couple great blessings, right? We have an opportunity to give our tithes and offerings to the Lord, that his work would continue to thrive in this place. Uh, we also uh, remember our baptism and celebrate baptism. We also are continue to be prepared for this meal of communion. Uh, may God bless our continued worship. Amen. Mm-hmm. 